Carl, what's the worst present you've ever had? You see, we don't really celebrate birthdays in our house, so... <laughs> what? Where are you from? What planet are you... What do you mean you don't celebrate birthdays? Are you here from another world observing? <laughs> Like trying to blend in, but not quite yeah, managing to pull it off. Not that fussed about it, right? You know I mean, it's yeah. The mum and dads are on the same day, and I think that just was like that's a bit weird, isn't it? And their anniversary, and well, they got married on their but their mutual birthday. But Carl, can I just I and mean, Christmas? But Carl, there's Christmas a difference between you saying. What do you mean their anniversary is on the same day? Of course, it's on the same day. Yeah, and the, and the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, what I mean is that. You, I mean, you say that you don't really celebrate your birthday, but presumably you have received some presents at some point in your life from your parents. Or anyone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, we'll come back to you later. Yeah. Thanks. Let's play a record. Carl, have a think about that, and we'll come back to you later. Thanks very much. <laughs> I'm just finding more and more things are, are annoying me. Really? Like, even... Like, at, the, at that Sony's night, right, you've got a lot of, uh respectable people go into that thing, you know, people yeah. who are high up at the BBC and that. Yeah. And just the way, you know, it's it's a posh night, there's people there with dinner jackets on and stuff. Mm. And then I, I went to the toilet for a wee. Old fella in there. Mm. I thought he looks he looks like he's been in the you know, the radio game for years, probably done loads of award winning Sony stuff. Yeah. You know, all the BBC documentaries to do, in depth stuff and I thought, you know, I wonder if I'll be like him when I'm and I'm old, I wonder if I'm as good as him. Thinking all that, he's having a wee in the next urinal. Farts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. He just farts. <laughs> 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 old fella in a dinner jacket, probably hired. And I but thought, is that, is that like they, they that. try to, they think, well, I better do it in here. And it's sort of like a trumpet. And uh, everyone, everyone just goes, yeah, that's fine. What's up with that? You know, uh, oh yeah, I know what you mean. Is it it's just the arrogance of doing he, it? He just did it. Uh, it was. It sounded like a a lost whale. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he didn't sort of go and try and clinch it. It went. It carried on. And then he went. Oh, that was a good one. Really? Old fella. Must have been about seventy. Oh dear. And what? Better out than in. Yeah. But it's not though. I wasn't. I was. I wasn't brought up like that. You see. Right. Because I did it. I mean, I never really did it that much as a kid. Sure. And then, I was at my mum and dad's. You never, sorry, you never did it that much as a kid. What farted? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not, not just like, you know, as a joke and that. We are taping this for next year's Sony Award, aren't we? We're taping this, what we're talking about now, aren't we? Mm. To hand in. Cause this is, go on. But I was at, at my mum and dad's, right? And, uh, Suzanne was sat on the floor in front of me and she was like, oh, rub me neck, it's hurting. So I thought, oh, and I hate doing that, it really d it bores me. Well, right? she's your girlfriend, for goodness sake. I know, yeah. Dad Winton's different, you're getting paid for that, go on. So I thought, the only way to shift her is I'll let one go, right? So I did that. <laughs> I love that! It's such a loving relationship. <laughs> I love that, that's great! Uh, so like just, doing the washing up badly. Yeah. She won't ask me again, what have you done? I've smashed the cups up <laughs> and I've <laughs> written, written in excrement across the wall. <laughs> well, that's no good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I won't do it again then. Give me the marigolds, I'll do it. I've nailed the cat to the fridge, what's <laughs> up with that? Yeah. Go on. But yeah, so I, so I did that and it worked. She sort of got up and said, oh, and my dad said, what what do you do that for? Yeah. <gasps> what was he thinking? So I said, oh, I, I, hate, I hate rubbing a neck, doesn't he, I didn't. So he says, you know, I've never trumped in front of your mother <laughs> for 40 years. <laughs> Sorry, where was this? Chigley? Why is this family talking like this? <laughs> yeah. um, I've never... Young Carl, I've never trumped in front of your mother in the 35 years. <laughs> why, you'd, why, what, I don't know what. No, it's just, it's just that he said, you know, we, we've done a lot of things in the family that Hold on, what, what did he say that for? What, he's never, he's never trumped in front of your mother? He just offered that information up. Well, he, he just was surprised that I did it. He said, where have you got that from? Yeah. Well, you, you, you lower intestines, I thought. What do you mean? You have to imagine, imagine there's a class of farting. Oh, uh, no. we haven't, we haven't told our kids about farting. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't do it. We haven't told them about it. We haven't, no, we don't do it in front of it. <laughs> you have to learn it, do you? No, no, but there's a, there's a place. That's what I was always told. Go on. There's a place for that. Cornwall. <laughs> so, um, and, and my mum, you know, it's the same. She, she doesn't do it. Right. If she, if she goes to the toilet to, you know, do, do what you gotta do, she, uh, she makes sure, like, she, she'll sort of say things like, are you going out for a walk? <laughs> Are you going uh, out for a walk? Does well, she think, th does she know that you're broadcasting this? 
people, yeah. <laughs> They're probably around at the neighbours now, listening. Yeah. Any of you going out for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the door. So she, what, she kind of, she waits until everyone's left, or? She, she doesn't like the thought that everyone, do you know, like, cats don't like you staring at them when they're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I've never stared at a cat while he's doing anything. <laughs> Have you ever had a pet cat? What not do you really. mean? Yeah, go on, go on. No, it's just that like cats, uh, you know, if you get them a little litter tray. Yeah. I remember being told, like, now <laughs> when it does use it, don't sort of go and look at it. <laughs> it, put, it puts it off. I was the same as a kid. I didn't, it, when I had a <laughs> nappy. <laughs> Looks at you when you're on the bottom. No, no. When I was a kid, and I was in a nappy. Right. Yeah. I used to always um, like th there was a corner in the kitchen that yeah. I'd always go to, and everyone would be. Why like, did you go to the toilet? Because I had a nappy on. Oh yeah. Right. How old were you? Fourteen. Know, about, <laughs> about three or something. Yeah. Right. And I used to always go to this corner, and yeah. everyone everyone said, "Right, he's he's going to the corner. Don't watch, <laughs> don't stare at him." <laughs> You because you've got the same head. Yeah, you look like you, a baby. It's just the pain in his head. But with that, would you? Okay, would you put a nappy on for fifty quid? Now? Yeah, just I'm just be just sitting, just uh, do your work, right? No, anyway, just anyway, sit in the corner. Right? <laughs> so I'm not getting, I'm not doing that, right? Come on. So yeah, my mum's like that, and something else, she's she's good. I mean, okay, people, go, people go, might want to know. Dinner party, oh, no, it's Mrs. Pilkerson just in the corner. Just don't look at. Her. Yeah, <laughs> don't look at Mrs. P. She's just she's just in the corner of our kitchen. Don't just look away. <laughs> What's she doing? Just, she's just doing her business. She's, there she is, there she is squatting. Are you going for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, Carl. Another, uh, another trick I've learned from her, right, if, uh, if you're using, say, a friend's toilet or something, mm. and, uh, you don't want to leave your mark, um, just use- Go down the toilet and flush it. Use a, uh, take a box of matches with you. Yes. Yeah. Set fire to the girls. Set fire to the girls. Calls it a Burn the place down. And have a wonderful crap and just leave when the fire brigade get there. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Carl, tell uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet. Then, right? You know, I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that. Mm. And uh, one of the things I always like doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to. When he was a kid and that, yeah, right, because he got up to loads of stuff. And every time I see him, he tells me something. And I thought well, it's like, why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, right. So uh, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, to me, he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone. He's just the most extraordinary kind of. Well, this this character happened. Character. Right? I, I can't remember. There was a delay yesterday. There was problems on the Paddington line, yeah. and he was saying, "Our oh, trains aren't what they used to be." Sure. Um, he said, "You know, he said I was they used to be in, horses, didn't they?" Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet. And it was saying how you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver. Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right, so he said that's the problem with this country. Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to like getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, right, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, right, it was his job to get the coal, Right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh-huh. Right. Um, one day he's in, uh, he's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right. And that was like the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fellow who should have been sort of driving the train. Yeah. Right. He said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, oh. For a quick getaway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So, uh, so the fella goes in, in the pub, and my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on, he, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up, he says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blimey. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know, he'd say, what's he doing in the pub, he should be working, Good. right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh. Puts it, puts it into gear or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, people who don't know about trains, something that I learnt is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the, on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So, he doesn't realise this though, because he's, uh, he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal in Of course, so, so you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally. Yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But he, he didn't know that, was so he? he's yeah. pulling in, he's thinking, right, well, I'll, put the brakes, I'll put the brakes on now, yeah. right? Puts the brakes on, the train just keeps going, he's going, oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It plows right through the signal box. <laughs> right? Uh, loads the of damage. The pulling the signal to know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> loads of, loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it, if it was today's money, yeah. it'd be about three to four <laughs> million pounds worth of damage. It, it shut the station off God. for four weeks. Um, but he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job, the f one who was in the, in the pub. Yeah. Um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, uh, his, uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's brilliant. So I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. You'd have to get the family involved. No, the sort of stuff my dad goes on about. We'd never put it on telly. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't your dad ever pop anything down in writing? <laughs> I'll tell you what, my mum wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, there's been loads of things, little inventions she's come up with and that, which she's been too busy doing other stuff. But she used to come up with stories for me as a kid that I'm sure if they came out they'd be a success. Yeah. Go on. Do you remember any of them? Uh, it was one about a little red car. I can't remember how that ended. Uh, but the one that was really good was about a, uh, a kid who gets, uh, a dog. Right? Um, but it's quite an old dog. This is gonna be an episode of the Walt ones, yeah. isn't it? And right. then go on. Go on. And, uh, he's playing with the dog and that, but it starts getting a bit old. It's about 15 or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, he goes, oh, it's rubbish, this dog. <laughs> 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 so, I would love that book for kids! <laughs> I would love that book! Tommy went, oh, mummy, my dog's- oh, no, no. Kill it then! <laughs> Kid then, shall I? Yeah, just throw it in the lake. I'll get you another one. Do you want a Nintendo? Yeah. Kick the rabbit to death then. Right, so he said, oh, mum, you know, this dog's rubbish and that. I'm sick of it. Yeah. So she goes... How old were you when your mum was telling you this story? Uh, I don't know, about four. Okay. It wasn't last week on holiday. Uh, <laughs> no, right. So, uh, so she goes, oh, alright then, we'll get you another one. Yeah. She goes, brilliant. What did you do with the old one? Just kept it, but didn't sort of play with it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Just ostracised it. <laughs> it uh, yeah. Left of its own free will, or curled up and died. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. So, uh, what did so you get him? What sort of dog? I think it was a little, uh, little baby, like Labrador puppy, mm -hmm. little puppy. Yeah. Yeah, Labrador. Right. Good one. Good choice. Good choice for a second dog. So, um, yeah. So I'm loving this story. <laughs> so I'm actually it. loving this story. So Where does he live? I, th I don't know. It didn't matter. It didn't matter, it was near a, near a lake, old. Oh, that's <laughs> well, where they were getting rid of all the, yeah. uh, that's that's not, sure. yeah. we're, we're getting, that'll make sense in a minute, right? So, mm. uh, so, he's got the little dog, he's playing around with it, he's mm. playing with its belly and stuff, he's thinking this is brilliant, best dog I've ever had, right? And the other dog sat in the corner looking all fed up, yeah. right? So, uh. I like this story. So he says, he says to his mum, right, I'm taking, uh, little puppy down the park. Yeah. And she goes, well, take the old one with you. And he goes, oh, do we have to? It's the moral, I bet the old one saves him. So, it. so, he goes, oh, do I have to? She goes, yeah, it still needs a walk and that. It's crapping all over the house. Right? Yeah. So, he takes it down the park, right? And, uh, he's playing around and he's playing near the, near the lake. Right? Is the puppy near the lake, Carl? Because this is what's worrying me. Yeah. Puppy's near the lake, yeah. right? That jumps in. Yeah. The kid goes, oh god, he jumps in. Remembers he can't swim. Yeah, idiot. Right? This kid is based on you, isn't it? Almost certainly. Flapping about. Water's going everywhere, he's going, I can't, oh god, and he, he, like, he wants the puppy to help him, but the puppy's just like drowning as well. Yeah. yeah. The old dog comes up, drags them both out. He goes, I can't believe it. You know, I said I was fed up with you. Yeah. You saved me life. Yeah. He gets home, and he says to his mum, Kill the little one. The puppy. Kill the puppy. Yeah. So, it's good little, good What little does he story. say when he gets home? He said, I don't need the puppy now, I've got a Brilliant! <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Genius! <laughs> It's good, isn't it? Yeah, so the moral of that story is well, just follow your whims. They just- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you get bored, get bored and get, <laughs> yeah. get another puppy. Get another dog. If you get bored with the old one again, just do it again. I mean, yeah. just eventually, you know, get something yeah, that you like for a little- Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. That is a brilliant story, though. <laughs> yeah. There's a time and place to be lost. 
Uh, well, when, go on. Uh, well, a place What's you the don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay, And specific. the time? The time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, okay. but that time I was in a rush. And and I was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um. I'll do one, I'll do one side of the brain, you do the other side of the brain, okay, in your head, okay? Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house. Cause it's a, it's a field. You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You were meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't- I've, I've never been that lost, when I'm walking <laughs> across a field. At the edge of the field, I'd go, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I wouldn't get in the middle- I wouldn't go that far. I'd go, right, I definitely shouldn't be here. <laughs> you did once. You were in the, in the middle of a field and your dad had to rescue yeah, you. Yeah, that's when I was a kid because I was reading as I was walking. <laughs> And he never read again. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> reading. Okay, so so uh, so okay. <laughs> walking. Carl, I know you're enjoying this book. I've got, can I have a word with you? Just look. Just look past the book a minute. It's, it's just it's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when my other senses went. Hang on a minute, I'm being stung, load of nettles and stuff. And I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, "Where's Carl?" I was there for about an hour and a half. <laughs> you showed a book. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me like a cartoon. But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like we were in. Uh, I think it was Saint. I it's Saint Ives in Cornwall. Yeah. 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 I was in St. Ives, and uh, just, you know, it was a nice day and that, there was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Oh. Um, it's this old, it was haunted, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. No, honestly. No, not honestly, it wasn't haunted, there's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most, it's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs. Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat on my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I had a kip all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs. Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then, uh Sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs. Battersby didn't exist, is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. Wasn't the landlady? No, there was no landlady. It's a big house, about, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. My were mum and dad went were out you one ill? night. Did you have flu at the no, time? No, I had nothing like that, I just- So you were sitting up, but you were awake. And you were having a conversation with Mrs. Battersby. <laughs> <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right. But so at the time, I was like, "Oh, she just doesn't shut up, chatting all night." So you don't remember this happening, or you do remember it happening? No, I remember that. Like, n if I see my mum now and I mention say, "Ah," she'll go, "Oh yeah, Mrs. Battersby." She remembers coming in because she was older than me, wasn't she? So to Who? her, my mum was she. Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby. She was older than both she of you. She was older because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, "Oh, it's Susan or whatever." Right, sure. You call Batter older people Batter by the surname, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, me up all night. Don't know. I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh, why do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, why, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? Uh. Your mum was older though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this I'm event was. I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing a picture of myself at this wedding. Okay. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about- How were you uh, uh, about- I'd say I look about seven or eight, looking at the picture. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So Mrs. Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at I all. I don't remember the chat now. Well then so, why are you telling- you must your remember memory. it because you're telling us about it's it. Not your because memory. it's a memory, my mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is, oh this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once and you don't even remember the ghost. Mrs. But, Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you the don't name, remember her. because your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, they go hearsay, thrown out of court. Right. You yeah. don't have a memory of Mrs. Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I had a beetle. <laughs> I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. Now, I can't remember that now. You can't remember that, but you you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but 
the fundamental thing is that we can believe <laughs> we can believe amazing. we can believe you ate a beetle well because that is something that could happen in real life but what we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost <laughs> what sort of beetle was it just one of them standard beetles just a black shiny one thing is right a couple of years ago we were in the ivy and the food came and there's a big blob of wasabi right it was like a, a um I called an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? And uh, I looked over at Carl and he started going, <gasps> drinking water. I said, what have you done? He said, I have that. I said, that was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> 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 That's a classy restaurant where they're serving one mushy pea. Well, they do that, don't they? Wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't it? Yeah. I love the fact that it's this exactly the same thing. <laughs> they swap beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things. You see something. You it's think, a good job you remember that anecdote, though, because he doesn't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In years to come, we're going. Ate some wasabi once. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did. Yeah, I was in the <laughs> ivy. I thought. I thought it were mushy pea. <laughs> huh? <laughs> So hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Battersby because what you confidently th said, you confidently said, um, it, was it, was, so it was haunted, it was, it was haunted place, yeah. but you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter, you don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life, But you supposedly you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know. When I was younger, I but didn't you remember think that was a ghost. But you remember the specifics of an oh, aunt walking so you, around? Yeah, so you thought, ah, oh, so I see. If you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then- it, it, Then when I mentioned it, my mum was saying, what do you mean? Mrs. Battersby. Who's Mrs. Battersby? Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scary. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby, I must admit. But so, yeah, that was, uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Right. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. <laughs> 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 This picture on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan so horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's of course where the phrase, be where Greeks bearing gifts, comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You haven't what, heard what, that one? Go on. What, what's that again? Be where Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what is that? Is that used worldwide or what? Will he say that in Greece as well, or? Because uh. <laughs> imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't actually mean we were of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like maybe it's too good to be true, or you know. It's just the opposite to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, for probably where it came from was Justin like, from South End emailed in, he just said, uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic, mm, yeah, ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? Cheeky, isn't it? Eh? What? Never <laughs> mind. Well, I think that probably proves it. <laughs> I thought of another one I like as well. I was saying, you might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard- I don't think I've heard that. I have heard it, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like, if you're gonna do something, you know, you might as well go the whole hog, depending on the- the outcome. Be because it's based on reality, that's why I like it, because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So, if you're gonna get caught, don't steal a lamb, you know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung, but good in a sheep. Oh, your dad'd be in trouble down in oh. Wales stealing stuff from that uh, oh. from that well, phone box. Well, he has a couple of sayings, right? Your father. Uh, mm. Yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um, <laughs> Why would you? Ask what, Suzanne. One is uh, don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means uh, it's patronising. To, to to of course of course I know that you're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's it's a totally made up thing. It's like your granny sucks eggs, doesn't she? Because she's she's older than you, and it's probably a lost art or something. All right. Uh, and the other one um, don't sucks th eggs. Sucks yeah. eggs. Yeah. Sucks eggs. Sorry, I thought you said something else. Uh, yeah. Don't nudge your granny when she's shaving. What? what? Sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. 
Don't nudge your- sorry, say well, that's slower, I can't Don't, don't nudge, nudge your granny when she's having a shave. Well, what is that in context? Because I can't work out what the analogy is there, because that might just be you-, you when you were little, you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. But what- uh, why is your granny shaving? Well, no, what- what context is that said in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh can't remember. I can't- I, I, I don't are know. Are you sure these are specific to your granny? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, why are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> Sucking yeah. eggs, sucking eggs, sucking eggs. Sucking eggs. Oh, that's, oh yeah. God. That's made- that's <laughs> yeah, made, that's it, made it, worse. it worse. Carl's granny sucking eggs whilst I- <laughs> That <laughs> is my- a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> We've no idea, I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. <laughs> what, yeah. Parmesan? I, I don't know, maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, in man in. Tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Scorpio Rising, Death in Vegas on XFM 104.9. Steve, mm -hmm. I'm Ricky Gervais. Carl, Carl's a little bit more, less stressed now. The ca camera crew have gone, his dad's not listening, we think. Well, yeah, yeah who knows? Mm. Who knows? But, uh, you're chilled. I tell you what though, me, uh, my mum was loving it. Do you, well, know, she, do you know Rockbusters? I love- do I know Rockbusters? Oh. I love Rockbusters. She's, I think uh, I dream of it. She was taking part, I mean she doesn't know a lot of the, the new bands and that, mm. but she uh, she made some up for uh, some older bands and that. Oh she she did some herself? She made some herself, sent them in the post. So are you gonna use those today? Um, she's not quite got the hang of it. Okay. So, oh, well, I'm, like, I'm like a genius son. Have you got them there? Can we hear what they well, are? Do you keep talking a second then? I'm quite excited, I mean if they're, if they're even approaching say the genius of Wet Knee Houston. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. uh, there was another one which was something to do with a trench, Carl. What was that? Oh, that was Dandy Warhols. That was a good one. Dandy Warhols. That, I think yeah. that was his, that, that was, was his finest moment. Yeah. yeah. Incidentally, I've got an email here from, uh, someone called Sauda, if that's a he or a she, but let's assume it's a she, just for, uh, glam's sake. Yeah. Um, she said she saw an old man eating a Twix last week, Carl, so that blows your theory out I'm not having it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you are a bloke, he's calling you a liar, so maybe you want a little rumble later? In fact, if you are a bloke, he's calling you a girl. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah then. Um, these are ones that my mum's made up. Um. Brilliant. Right, just in case you're a new listener, I'll give some initials out and a cryptic clue. Mm. And and it makes up a band, doesn't it? Yeah. Or a solo artist. Yeah, or a solo not artist. so much cryptic as what 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 you're thinking. Well, yeah. Go on. Uh, my mum sent this one. Uh, this group would be good at doing your hair. <laughs> this group would be good at doing your hair. T P. Uh, is there is there a group called the hairdressers <laughs> from the sixties? Would be good at doing what? your hair. T P. T P. T P. Is it the something? The platters. The platters. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, all right. Yeah, that's so good. that's that's all right. Nice. Uh, let's have a look. Uh. This group sound like dinosaurs. Group sound like dinosaurs. T Rex. T Rex. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. They're not so much cryptic, are they? Uh, this group. <laughs> they're very low. They're good. This group likes being uh, by the sand and the and the sea. <laughs> this group likes being. Are <laughs> the they the Beach Boys? Sea. Boys. Beach Beach Boys. Boys. <laughs> 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 this band are called the Beatles. Ah, <laughs> uh, the Beatles. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> we just have just uh, have a. a <laughs> <laughs> What else you got? Um, <laughs> it's oh, funny cause, cause one of them that she's done, I'm actually doing today, I thought of in the week. Right, so. is it the same clip? Uh, it was, yeah. Wow, well, great minds think alike, here's so the last this is obviously coincidence. There's a last one from a- This guy sounds superb. <laughs> this guy sounds superb. The Bachelors. Glenn Campbell. <laughs> 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 That's good. I like that. I think I tell you this. I think you should get onto one of the big game uh, organisations, Parker Brothers or whatever, because this has got to be. T I mean, this could sweep the nation at Christmas. Don't you think this is the perfect Christmas <laughs> game? Yeah. Well, I think this is what's going to make or break the MTV thing. Right. <laughs> Some kind of TV version. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just yeah. thinking mm. into ad breaks. You know, coming up next is this band. Be careful though, Carl, because you know, make sure you retain the rights because I can see they're selling abroad. You yeah. Know, you and I can America. see someone coming along and taking this sort of like the the, the rockbusters and changing one word and like another. Na like another game out of it and just what using the same format. What I don't know, I know, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I can't think of nothing there, but they could change- so Sort what, of like- They change mm. the word rock to something else and have it- What could it be, brick block? Yeah, and so you'd have to, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah, be careful. Yeah. Blockbusters will never work. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his little face. <laughs> Carl wanted to start off with a stereophonics. Oh, loser. Cause it was a newer track. 
And Carl now, we've made him what he is. He was nothing when Nobody. we found him. He was right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, we should start off with the story of finance. I'm going, Trying Carl, to tell you what to do, really. If I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> Basically. But he'd probably come to me, I imagine, wouldn't he? <laughs> before, I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. So, just keep it- just cause he uh, was in a- what was it? Pilkey's yeah, making mobile disc music. Pilkey's Pilk making music. I bet you never pleased a crowd once. Did. Loads of times. Go yeah. on then, what did you play? Loads What's your biggest gig you ever played? I did, uh, a, like a social club gig. Yeah. And- and it wasn't just about the music, either. <laughs> I used to- What else could it be about? <laughs> I used to take prizes and- and cigars and stuff. <laughs> In a youth club! To give away. I just love these, like, 14-year-old manks hanging out going, let's go down here, you might have some fags yeah. and cigars for us. Well, it was whatever, like, was on my mum and dad's dressing table. That could have uh, been embarrassing, could <laughs> it? That could have been deeply embarrassing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. You've won. <laughs> and third prize, some handcuffs. And a black mamba. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that at any point, in your upbringing, your parents left around any kind of marital aid on the dressing table. <laughs> don't- don't think I'm saying that, Carl. <laughs> I'm not suggesting- <laughs> like, he doesn't like this, does no, he? Well, I, no, I can understand why. Oh yeah, cos it's about yeah. his- About his parents having sex. <laughs> well, they must have. Yeah, it was. At, at least least three least. times. I think I was an accident. <laughs> like, I still have had sex well, Carl. I, I think- I think it's been ongoing. Just because me- me brother and sister are quite older than me. Yeah, me too. I was an accident. I know that, yeah. Um, How old's your, uh, brother and sister? Um, I think my sister's about thirty-nine. Right. And my brother's about thirty-seven. Okay. And you're twenty-nine? I'm like twenty-nine. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, um, my, my next one's eleven years older than me. Yeah. That was definitely a... Do you want to have a hug, you two, or...? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're dealing yeah. with it now, you got oh, over Well, it? would you like to see us have a hug, or...? <laughs> oh. Cardigans. You're the storm on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly the end of the show, but we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't let them down, would we? You know what it is now, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> right. Now, whilst I was in Cornwall, I wasn't online, right? I didn't no. have the internet, so it was like, oh, what am I gonna do? And I didn't come back till yesterday. And I thought there's loads going on that I don't know about in the monkey world and stuff. I was hoping to get some from the zoo that I was meant to be going to. Of course, that didn't happen. So, I said to my dad, do you know anything about monkeys? Have you got any stories with monkeys? Brilliant. This is a- no, this is what Trevor McDonald does. <laughs> Turned out- he cut, Caught the ten, he goes, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's got nothing. <laughs> dad, anything happened? You got anything politics? Anything politics, dad? <laughs> this isn't monkey news, I'm just giving you this free. Uh -huh. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, turned out one of his mates used to have a chimp. <laughs> right. Um, what do you mean, one of his mates used to have a chimp? Well, two, two of his mates. Mind oh, sorry, yeah, mate, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking it sounds a bit far-fetched living in Manchester-like, <laughs> but if there was two of them. He had a chimp, um, had to thump it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> For doing what, answering back? <laughs> oh, God! Tried it on with his wife. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's a proper fist fight in a pub in Manchester. Oh. I'd call him up, but he's one of them who like swears all the time. Right. Oh. I mean, it'd be good. It'd be good to get him on. And just, let's interview just, him. Can we not interview him pre-record? We can bleep out the swear. And I'd love to hear his story. Do a lot of work. Like. Yeah. Well, well, it, 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 well, we're not scared of work. Obviously. No, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, myself. You can't be bothered. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, so. I have a word. I have a word. I saw it. Out. Yeah. Try yeah. Yeah. Out yeah, out. Um, yeah. Well, don't yeah. tell us the rest of the story then. Let's let him say it in his own. No, words. but there was another one as well. Uh, some. Fella. When you say you can get him on, but he swears a lot, you mean the monkey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming he's more coherent than your dad's mate. <laughs> but there's him, and there's some other fellow he knows who had a funny name. I'll have to find out because you'll love his name. But he was a drag artist. Yeah. And. Uh, I think he said he went- my dad went round one day, I don't know why, right? Went round there, knocked on the door, chimp answered. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I don't know what you're doing, mate. I don't know where- this place you live, next door there's an horse in the front room. There's chimps mad, running round. Mad. Anyway, uh, 
Chimpanzee! So it's at the end of the story, there's a chimpanzee in the door and that's the end. You sure it wasn't the drag artist before he shaved? No, no. Sure it wasn't your grand? Because oh. I like the really airy ones that decide they can be female impersonators. <laughs> yeah, your grand. <laughs> I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. And, and I, I, when I was going through it, hmm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, Cigars uh, and dildos. And one day, right. Same thing. Uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right, well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God, I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. <sighs> so she goes, like, what? So oh, not, not big stuff, I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I'll just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Works out at 7.2 <laughs> per day. So, um... How so many calculators do you need? So, anyway, <laughs> so it was when that phase... You failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so, anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to, like... Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confessed to... It's magic in the back. <laughs> yeah. Of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She said, Brilliant. Oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. Bloody <laughs> that's great. And it's the same oh. sort of thing to uh, yours. And did you- And um, he went, hold on, I'm just work out the interest on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I bank 10 percent. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds forty. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and did you, so, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, uh, did, 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you I just, I just stuff with your, with that other, because yeah, what I'm saying is presumably you got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 right, you know. no. She went, no worries, I'll just go and get my purse, it's on the dressing table. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Carl! <laughs> Do you want a cigar? <laughs> 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 what other things you used to give away at your disco then that you'd find on the dressing table? You used to go into your parents' room and go, what can I give away it was, tonight? It was stuff like a c cigars. Yeah. I'd like cigars. Yeah. Uh, I had a pair of tights. What <laughs> 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 you mean? Unopened. You know, you get them in like a long... <laughs> Who did you give that to? Just whoever did the prize. It was stuff like, you know, we we did like a little raffle. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine Carl going, this is for a pair Who's of... Who's going joyriding this week? Pretty Polly, sheer. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, he's yeah. doing a bank job this exactly. week. Exactly, that's what it was used for, yeah. Just little bits of, you know, unopened makeup, just stuff like that. And did right. their parents not notice? No, because it's stuff that... You're not that bothered about him. If a telly went missing, they'd notice it. <laughs> they would, wouldn't they? They'd be staring at a wall for three days. <laughs> but a pair of tights and a cigar and that. Yeah. Get away with it. Yeah. But it's it's funny as well because like you had you had two names. I just like remembered. I started <laughs> off as um, Dazzling Darren's Disco, just because the first lights I could afford belonged to someone who had their name put in lights. Right. So I went along with that <laughs> you had name to for a bit. Pretend you were called Darren. That's lovely. <laughs> That's crazy. Is it worth it? <laughs> Brilliant. And then it went on to. Pilkins making music. Yeah. 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 That's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah we've been on. waiting for what, what are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, lined brilliant. Up. You and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Mm. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into parked cars on their skateboards and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. Can't it's rather like when a, a little it's old a lady problem. went and got the A-team, you know. It's a, it's show. a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird, because now, now it has got out of hand. Do you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, the summers were nice as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and- Police are getting short or But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tear away. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here, mean, the but- the thing is, I was, I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge. 
and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is a fella who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of you were. It came Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Chucking <laughs> a stone in the air, love it! see how far I could throw Brilliant. It. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you though. invent that game? Right. Did so you anyway. get the stone for your birthday? <laughs> 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 go and play with your stone. <laughs> he gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun funny angle, and it, it, of course it, did. it ate the back of this, uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it. Yeah. In case yeah. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked out the door. <laughs> Genius, it's <laughs> a brilliant <laughs> plan. It's a brilliant plan. <laughs> I it's couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so <laughs> I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family, who, uh, <laughs> have saw me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, go and get the door, and I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. I went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And... I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working sort of evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said, all he, he looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, <laughs> now, the thing Carl, he, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong, uh, and I was scared that my dad was going to belt me. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll be more careful next but time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do the, you the, do? the father's father. I don't even, I, I don't know if, if I you were help. living in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? What if, what if they'd come over and they, they just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you'd been saving over the years and just threw mm. your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just... I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes it's the only way. I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite Go to sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes down, just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah. Just <laughs> so, yeah. Equally, um, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It won't work. <laughs> Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Right, so, um... I've learnt that you can, you know, fiddle around with your brain when awake. That's brilliant. I've never been a fan of Doctors, though, so this was a good one for me to, yeah. to look up, cos... Yeah. Did I tell you the time... When, uh, the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die. Alright, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about fifteen, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this, we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a, like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or, there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to like bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat alone. Brilliant. Scavenging, yeah. eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really, it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean, it used to be a chocker. Uh, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> the headmaster crawled <laughs> yeah. fighting the kids off. <laughs> right, so I'd have like, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So, you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven, uh, jam donuts, a few congress tarts, uh, <laughs> What's a congress 
great start. Just all of them. It's me. I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. <laughs> Uh, and uh, if anyone maybe... can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once yeah. twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. <laughs> in your life, yeah. yeah a so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads? So... And the horse in the city, uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Mm -hmm. I, I was like in agony, could mm -hmm. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> you could hardly stagger to the free cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't walk. He gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My man was panicking. Sure. He went. My dad came in from work. She said, oh, something's really bad with Carl. I think it's serious. It's, you know, the doctor's only ain't got long left. So he said, what? He said that and just left. So she said, yeah. He said, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, <laughs> Carl, I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she yeah, didn't go into detail. Well, I, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, no, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not gonna probe him, he's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in, hi honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know. Tricky one. I don't it is get, a tricky, I don't it is a tricky one, yeah. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath, put a mattress on the, on top of you. That's it. Sorry, wh why are you <laughs> doing that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If what uh, kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's what I read somewhere. Yeah. You get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no. No, no, no. No. Might be daft. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think they're enamel baths then though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um, me dad hates, uh, he hates being ripped off, right? Yes. Well, no, I can relate to that, that's important. Um, hates coming to London now, he always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip off. Mm. Uh, last time he came he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was fourteen pounds and he just yeah. was livid. And then uh, we had an argument about that and then we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price and it was something like twenty quid or something. And he said, twenty quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. He said, I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, he spoke to me the other day. I said, how are things? Are they alright? He said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from because he cut the other one off? Of course, off, yeah. Right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh, so he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And he said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out, he was happy, the bed arrived, it's a nice bed, he said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it, and it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right? So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're a rip-off merchant, uh -huh. right? 
Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by, post comes, only another catalogue oh, in the post. he's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back and it said on it, this catalogue will always be property of, you know, the company that, that does it. Um, if w so you can't throw it away. If, if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to, to get it back off you, right. right? So he thought, right, well, they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up and said, uh, all right, Mr. Pilkington here, bought a bed off you, you con me, and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. You've sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours, yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something uh, a day. Brilliant. He said, you already owe me six pound twenty eight. <laughs> something like that. Genius. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorted it out. So again, you know, it's- it So hang on, but are they going along with this? I don't know what happened. He said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said, I'm not bothered. They can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah. 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 So, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week, it was like six pound odd. Yeah. That was, I think that was on Tuesday. So, so he's, 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 you know, he's just leaving. It's like laughing. an investment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an antique. He's it's bought, just, right? yeah, yeah. It's just going up every day. So, uh, well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I, 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 one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need to be asked of him. But I might sit and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington, <laughs> your son Carl. <laughs> New it's single from uh, Nick Cave, I think. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Can Carl do something to prove you are on live and not recorded? I'm sure that will tax his little bald head to bursting point. Um, what's his name? Jason. How can you prove that we're live on air? Come on, how could you prove that we're live on air? Happy Christmas Eve, Jason. No, we could have recorded this a week ago. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be Christmas Eve. No, but <laughs> happy she Christmas Eve, innit? No, but we didn't no, record it. No, think, think. All right, it's, uh, it's it's nearly quarter to twelve. Yeah, but we could have we could have started with the clock, knowing that we were going to record it as live. We could have done this last all right, Wednesday. All right, then. all right. Uh, it's Radio Two. It's a nice day out there. Sun's out. Well, that's a guess. And 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 do you think? Oh, it is sunny. Yeah, it is. It is sunny. But yeah. Generally, but, it's but, been but hold on, wait a minute. We're in London. Someone listening in in Manchester. It might be raining. It probably is raining. Um. Look, he can't work out how to make sure it's live. Look at him looking up in the sky. Look at him. His head is gonna burst. There's a little bit of blood coming from his <laughs> ear. How can we prove we're live? My mum's budgie died last night. <laughs> but that- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God! Don't laugh at that. Don't it's laugh. only your mum that can confirm that. <laughs> I did bur- oh, yeah. No one knows whether your, uh, the budgie died or not. Was he- was he- was he pictured holding a copy of today's paper? What are you talking about, Carl? I can't- I can't prove anything then. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. so right! Next question. Oh, that's amazing! Oh, God. <laughs> you- you right. gave us the, uh, devastating news last week that just before Christmas, your mum's budgie died. How was Christmas in your household, was it? Um, little bit down. Little bit down, you know, with- with any death it's always sad, isn't it, no matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly um, budgie. Well, I mean, how long she had it? I, probably lasted about eight years or something, which is pretty good, isn't it, for a budgie? Right. Yeah, I think so. Um, came unexpected. It wasn't ill. Um, <laughs> right. And, uh, what she- what- I spoke to her the other day and I said, you know, how's it going? Cause on Christmas Day she was down. Yeah. Been calling her off every day. And I spoke to her the other day and said, you know, how are things? And she said, uh, she said, well, the other bird that's in the cage, she's got, a uh, some sort of parrot that's in the same cage as it. Right. It's been a bit down. Sure. It's missing its mate. So what she did, she kept a few feathers from the budgie that died, right? right? She got a rock, a couple of, uh, sandwich fasteners, <laughs> stuck the feathers on the rock. The other bird's happy now. Wow. Now I know that your mother explains everything. And if you ever die, we just get a tennis ball, stick it on the end of a broom, <laughs> she'll be happy. Steve? Yes? I think, uh, Carl's gonna put most people to shame. We were talking about generosity earlier. Because Carl is a nice, generous bloke when it, when it really comes to it. He's paying for Father's Day. He's paying for the cottage that he's going away with his dad. Are you really, Carl? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no way of us proving if that's true or not. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> well, you could be lying. <laughs> but why would I do that? 
Well, because you want to show off. I didn't do it on air, you mentioned it. <laughs> I don't want people to know how generous I am. <laughs> I just... <laughs> well, just do it, just get on with it, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Look, look charity yeah. work in that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you, do you, do, but I, I'd have thought that you wouldn't have fallen for Father's Day. I'd have thought you'd have known it was like... Well, we don't. I mean, to be honest, there's a bit of a coincidence, because I paid yeah. for it anyway, and it's happened to fall on... Right. On Father's Day, mm. right? Don't, I mean, Dad's hard. Not don't, that don't, don't fall for it. It, it. I mean, obviously that and Mother's Day, and a plethora of other things were, I mean, literally invented mm. by card companies to make more money. I know. Oh, yeah, that's that's that's. Uh, I mean, my dad always says, "Don't don't get him a card or anything," because um, he hates it with all these things that I'd like, you know, rip off times really, just ripping people off. Yeah. Um, so it sounds a bit stingy, though. But well, no, no, I mean, he's right. Yeah. He's right, it's just, uh Because fellas aren't bothered about getting cards anyway, are they? But the the other thing that he noticed, um you know, helping out the flower companies, the Princess Diana thing, when she... Oh, f Sorry. Yeah. No. Jesus. Cry God. So when, yeah, when... Carl, when... What, what, what do you mean? No, what do you the... mean? That's, that's what he said. He said, oh... Look. I nearly swore then, because I was... Uh, you surprise me all the time. No, no, But just... that is incredible. Sorry, what... I don't understand what you're talking about. All the flowers that were sort of sold that day... Right. What, for right. people to leave as a commemoration? Yeah, they, they, they made a, made a mint, didn't they? Who did? Flower companies. Right, so what so are you saying? saying? So you're he saying... was just saying, you know, makes you wonder... <laughs> what, whether... About what? Whether it was in the floor or behind the hit. Oh. So it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy by the flower companies. I would love to see you and your dad just sitting at home watching a bit of Channel 5 when apes go mental, right, with your, with your roast when's dinner. When's that on? When's that on? <laughs> <laughs> and then all like, well, yeah, right, you know, you know, kill Diana, don't you? The flower company's son. Right, 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 quite right, Dad, you're not wrong. What are you talking about? No, no, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, it's it's like you were saying about the cards, you know, on Father's Day and that, it's, it's, it's just a bit, too, just much a bit too much of a coincidence, too much of a coincidence. I'd be interested to see sort of, you know, like the business graph, sure. <laughs> yeah. on how the companies were doing, then suddenly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, but then, but then by the same token, uh, Elton John, you know, he had the biggest selling hit record, didn't he, off the back of that, mm. I mean, so, is he incriminated as well? If you want, I mean... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a conspiracy there, theory you've not kind of analysed terribly closely. You've put it out there and if people maybe who are investigating want to kind of add that into their inquiries, then they can. Yeah. Sure. But, uh, no, that's, 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 that's all I'm saying. I'm just, you know... Because it's always the same thing, isn't it? Like, I was out <laughs> shopping the other day, uh, you know, treating Suzanne like I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I like I like spending money in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was in WH Smith's. Yeah. Oh, classic. Yeah. He, what was, he, it, uh, was it? Was it a big birthday? Was <laughs> it? You, you, you was, it th was it a thirtieth? No, I was I was getting a. Uh, <laughs> was it two biros for the price of one? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting I was getting a card for my dad for Father's Day anyway because yeah. I'm yeah. seeing him. Yeah. Uh, big Toblerone. Yeah. There was a giant who, is it, who, who is it? Who said Father's Day? They love a, love a Toblerone. I've never understood Toblerone because the only time I see Toblerone is in airports, yeah. right, and mini bars. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is what the, the 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 small Toblerone is for the mini bar in a hotel, yeah. three star upwards, mm. and the big Toblerone. Well, it's the big is, Toblerone is a gift, isn't it? It can uh, only be a gift. You wouldn't uh, buy a big Toblerone you, uh, for yourself. Yeah, a duty free gift. The Toblerone. It's next to um, you know uh, Chanel Number no. Five Toblerone <laughs> yeah. and a bear. <laughs> but it's, who specifically yeah. would you be buying that Toblerone for? I don't know. Someone who's clearly never had it before and would think it was interesting novelty. It, uh, yeah. Well, this I'll, gift's interesting. I'll tell you what, though. Toblerone is brilliant. I mean, if, if whoever makes that, if they want to send sort of, you know, some Toblerones, I, I mean, I, I will eat Toblerone. Well, I, yeah. I think very much the same and, uh, about, um, I think very much the same about fags. And of course- just cigarettes. If you've got any boxes of cigarettes and, uh, <laughs> that you don't want, you know, uh, duty free or whatever, I, send them. I'd just like to say that, uh, d in no way do, do, do I endorse <laughs> Carl's dad's theory that flower companies were behind the death of Diana. No, uh, Maybe I could say that on air as well. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> uh...
Someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, it's isn't amazing. it? It's amazing. What are they called, those things? <laughs> I just I imagine that just then I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, oh, just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sound that is. I don't know. I, it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. sees someone undressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need- I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. When the found anything and said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, what do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig. I said, if they need a wig, what? Dogs going <laughs> bald. And he went, like, this is fine to him. He went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke put in a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but the and, the ba that... and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child, didn't, you didn't like, did you? Yeah, I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it, thought, yeah, it's a bit daft, that. Are you sure it's not the, the ageing pop group? No. The but, animals? But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> Because my mum, um, we had a cat, we used to get through loads of cats because we lived there. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's starting early today, isn't it? What do you mean? It's, it's only ten past cats. one. Just cause, cause what are you doing? No, Running a restaurant? We lived there. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! What do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. Right? So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. Dad it was kept their saying, risk. You know, stop wasting money. You know, it's it's not. Stop good. wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats. Right. So um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. Mm. And uh, <laughs> it's just bag of noodles, probably. <laughs> yeah, Malingra. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified. I'm going to witch house. Wrong. <laughs> oh God, bloody hell. Wrong. <laughs> don't, so, don't let me go to the Pilkington. <laughs> And it, 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 for some reason it kept being sick all the time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that is nice. That's definitely nice. So my mum thought, kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she yeah. shaved it. What? Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Now I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick, and it was a pain to wash because it kept getting. So caught she up. wanted a dry wipe cat. So <laughs> why didn't she just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird. It's weird though. So, now, so now he's cold and sick. No, but do you, no, not. I mean, not all of it. She left sort of the back half, but sort of from from its waist, sort of. I love that shaving because it's sick on itself. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it was yes. the weirdest looking thing. I mean, no, normally I like cats. I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. As soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can't thing. touch it. And then. So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love- uh, I- Carl! It must have- I mean, other, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. It's just making things worse. Did it get- I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it- I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the- Yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Ah! Oh, God! <laughs> oh! So. Oh, dear. <laughs> How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean it's it's still on the increase even though I'm not there. So <laughs> but I, whilst whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God. Yeah, oh. Yeah. And were you upset each time, or you just got used to it? It's it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. Yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of oh look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, f the, the, the first? Yeah, but I've said this before. It's always then you get used to how people look, and you don't. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you... I'm gonna burst. I'm gonna, you got to play a record. No, but because I just see <laughs> Steve's face. No, but I've got used to it. Shut up. Shut up.
<laughs> you see, sex on films and all that, right? When I was growing up, and I'd go. be watching. No, I'm just just saying an example of this, really, right? When I was growing up as a kid, and I'd be, you know, watching films with my dad, mm. right? He'd really be enjoying a film, yeah. right? And then a sex scene would happen, right? And he'd go on film. On, in or just film. behind you. Yeah. In the yeah. film, a sex scene would happen. <laughs> Your brother up to his old tricks again. <laughs> and he'd, he'd get up and go and make a cup of tea. Right? Right. Typhoon? That he'd stolen from <laughs> some sort of telephone box? <laughs> and like, even recently, he'll- he thinks it, it ruins a film. Do you know what I mean? Cause there's no need for it to happen, is there? Really? Yes. Why? Sometimes it's- it, what it's warranted. If the film itself is yeah, no, some about films it isn't though. Some uh, some no, films not, it of isn't. Course, some films it's horrible. I think I think the films that um, him and his dad watch together on Channel Five, yeah. um, <laughs> probably not. Is it only on Channel no, Five in your house? Not, but let's put it, yeah, if you're watching, you know, I don't know, a late night Friday night, you know, from 1983. Yeah, illegal briefs. <laughs> 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 a beautiful lawyer has to defend a man who may be a killer. She falls in love with him, but does she? Does she know the real man? <laughs> oh, oh, dear. You know, you know what I mean, though. Lest you forget, of course, that I uh, love heat <laughs> with the bloke that is now in. Go on. You know, of course, that I, according to the uh, internet movie database, I um, once appeared in one of those films in the film Killer Image, a Canadian film, I believe, from 1989. According to that computer, uh, it's all wrong. Website, isn't it? It's all wrong. It's, it's all, all wrong. wrong. Of course, it is. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I was in that, and I played the role of Kirk. Was it a porn thing? Uh, no, 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 I think it's just an erotic thriller. Oh, right. I suppose it you only had a very small part though, didn't you? Indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, do, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't need to go that far. Say like in this Jesus programme, right? <laughs> Film. What's it called? The Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> Jesus, stop talking! You know what, what's his name? Is it Ralph in The Simpsons? Yes. I draw the kitty cat. It's like talking to that. Yeah. No, but right, this Temptation thing, right? <laughs> Do you know the- you know often we don't get that many complaints on this show. We don't get very many complaints. And I think that's either because there's no listeners, or B, it's because most people agree with Carl, and that terrifies I know. me. Or they let him off, because it's like, you know, you can plead insanity, you can go mental and yeah. kill a few people, but they go, oh, he's- he's, he's a bit backwards. Exactly. No, but was, was it because, like, they're saying that he was having it away? Or is it because you saw it? it what got the complaints? The complaint was the very suggestion it was a suggestion. that Christ It was, it was a blasphemous sex. thing, not the fact that you saw an actor's knob. So what about if they just cut it down a bit and you, you like, saw the little stable door closing? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the baby Jesus having sex! <laughs> it was the grown man! <laughs> the stable door shut in! No, but oh, you know what the nativity do? scene! <laughs> Ah, oh, that is brilliant. That yeah, is then, the wise men saying, I can't believe we brought mirror, we should have brought condoms. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. There's two for one offering, Boots. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were thinking. Oh, no, right. consent. <laughs> it's just, it's always awesome. Should we apologise now to the Christian, Christian church as yeah. well? So Sorry we to the little Chinese fellas, uh, little Welsh fellas, and the little Christian fellas. Yeah, we haven't yeah. said anything wrong. No. No. It's like, you see, when I, when I was <laughs> growing stable up- door. <laughs> I love the idea that in Carl's world, he was born in a stable, just thought, well, I yeah. love this place. Yeah. I'm just gonna stay here the rest of my days. This is good here. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> but, but when I was watching telly with my mum and dad, I mean, it still happens now, right? My dad will sort of go, oh, ruined. Good film ruined. Yeah. Right, if, if some sex scene happens. But, why doesn't he but what are we talking it? about sex scene? Are we talking about kissing or are we talking about, um, uh, penetration and looking at the camera? Going, just, just are you enjoying this, Pilkingtons? <laughs> what are we talking about? What is sort of extreme levels are we talking about? Right, last time I was down there, right? Yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, meet, meet Joe, meet Joe Black. Meet Joe Black. Meet, meet, meet yeah. Joe Black is a terrible yeah. film. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> uh, there was, it's a good film, and then, you know it's gonna happen, cause like the music comes in, Brad yeah. Pitt's keeping quiet, a woman's eyeing, eyeing him up. Sure. So <laughs> imagine- <laughs> Ah! My mum's- my mum's worked it out already and she's going, uh, anything on the other side, love? She knows, she, she knows. She knows it's, you know, something's, uh... uh well, and so you can be enjoying a film and you can be an hour and ten in, and then some spidey senses of one of them can go, should we turn it over and the other one goes, well, yeah, right. Are you sure it's not them protecting you? from scenes of sex, so that they're- what they're thinking is, what if Carl gets the idea to have sex? Yeah. That could lead to procreation, we don't want any more like him. We've yeah. got to- we've got to end the line here. You sure it's not the doctor keep calling out going, you are keeping away from <laughs> yeah, exactly. women, aren't you? He must never find are out Are you sure they're not embarrassed because they're watching yeah. a sex scene with their son? It, it happens all, every time, right? There's two things that my mum does, right? It's that, if there's sex scene on the telly, she'll go, mm. uh, you know, anything on the other side, love? Uh, and the other thing she always says, if ever there's anything on the telly with Elvis in it, yeah, 
she goes, oh, I like him, right, and we all know, we sat there, we know what she's gonna say next. Yeah. So you don't even bother saying why, right, and she goes, uh, he likes fat, ugly people. He what? He liked fat, ugly people. He didn't always go for, like, the good-looking fans in the crowd. What Elvis did? Yeah. Right. That was always the thing and- ch I'm like sorry, now, hold on. I- I don't know what we're doing now with our lives, Steve. Right, oh, wait, wait a minute, right. So, your mum says two things, right? She either says- oh, Is what, there anything else on the other side? Say, or, I like Elvis, there's a pause because you know what she's gonna say next. She says, he liked fat, ugly people. How often does this occur? Well, th because they've got like, you know, Sky, there's a lot of those channels on, they like the music channels, so Elvis always comes on, there's either an Elvis film, there's like, you know, a classic hit by him on And she'll go, I like Elvis, he likes fat, ugly people. And what do you mean he liked fat, ugly people? Is she a fat, ugly person? Because there's that special Vegas show, isn't there, where he's dancing about, right, mm. and he's got loads of scarves around his neck. Towels. Yeah. And like, he always hands them down to the fat, ugly ones. Right. And I always say it's because they're the fat, you know, they've got a sweaty face because they, they can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what world they I live in! I don't know in. how we've gone to this subject. What, is, what sort of world are you going when you're watching this face? And what do you mean fat, ugly ones? You mean they're in the front and they're sweating a lot because they're a bit yeah, chubby. Yeah, so she thinks, you know, is giving them a towel because but it's like he's really going, wipe your face, you're putting me off, you yeah. fat cow. Stop sweating near me. There's another one. What? So, hairy Chinese kids. Yeah. Jesus. We haven't slagged off hairy Chinese kids, we, we, we slagged off Chinese- we didn't slag anyone off, we just said they really haven't got a town as such and they wear shoes. What do we say? Yeah, little wooden shoes. And what the way- I just don't know how we got onto Elvis and big fat ugly women. I don't know where we- I don't know how we did sidestepped you see, from the last temptation of Christ. Did you see that fat, um, girls and feeders Go program? Go a minute. Hey? What's Tom Petty first. Oh, brilliant. It's a great song. Breakdown. How many Tom other Petty. radio shows have talked about Last Temptation of Christ, China to Home, yeah. Fat Ugly Women? Yeah. More than 60 minutes. Exactly. Incredible. <laughs> Sony Award winning. Um, so these scientists, they're stuck away in the darkness. Um, let's tell them what they've been missing. What's the highlights, Carl, of the last, um, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant and Carl Pilton's, by the way, XFM 104.9. Um, Etc. What's what have they missed for the last? Uh, just just do the last few weeks. What have they missed? Remember, they haven't got newspapers. They haven't got telly. What what's the? Look at him. He's looking at me like I just said that in Arabic. <laughs> what what do you understand? Think what what's happened. Think what they haven't got that you know about. What have you seen and heard in the last couple of weeks that they couldn't have? Well, like on on the news and that. What's what's gone on in the world and that? Y yeah. Uh, well, or just things you've done personally. I think that'll be of less interest. Yeah. Pope's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, li I like it. Pope's dead. I imagine that. Imagine if that wasn't breaking it to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they're listening in. You go, what's happened? Pope. The Pope's dead. <laughs> well, let's say like break it to us gently, Carl. Well, I think that's better than how they do it on the news normally, though, isn't it? They make what? a big deal out of it, and it pa you panic a bit when it's breaking news, and you think, oh, there's a war on. Yeah. And you go, Pope's there, and you go, well. So you've just used that was. short, sharp tactic. Yeah. yeah. Softly, like ripping a plaster off quickly. It, I just said it softly, no, Pope's dead. <laughs> Mm. When you were, you know all that coverage of the Pope with like those millions of people that had gathered in, you know, in Rome and stuff. Mm. I was thinking about, you remember we talked about the Queen Mother, mm. and they were queuing up and queuing up and queuing up to see the Pope. Yeah, like the state. four hours and to get a glimpse. And once again, I couldn't help but feel if they popped on some kind of like dessert trolley and just wheeled them past <laughs> everyone else, they could have got that done in about three quarters of an hour. Yeah. You know, once again, people not thinking, they're not expanding their minds. So you're yeah, not me. What, like students and rag week exactly. with a, with put a bed it, down on the street? Put one novelty beds, they're all dressed in kind of cardinal's gear. Yeah. Just, you know, trundling them off and down the, yes. But it's, the way, it's, it's the way they also said, they've now got a new pope. It's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in being king. <laughs> <laughs> So, who have we offended? I no, mean, it, 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 the thing is, it's never because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling about getting about friends, but it's going to be like we're going to be living with Sam and Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm, though. Not, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good but, that you can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. But, you know. 
Fuck, I've only seen if you can get away with it. <laughs> yeah, why couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I it's mean, he goes, he, he goes there a lot, doesn't he? He goes there a lot! That's why. <laughs> If you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, right. and we've we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps oh, he's not like raffles though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, what's it? it, it don't people put? Let's put this in context. You know, he's not he's not a villain. But sometimes when people leave groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was, where they live now, they've retired, right? They've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere quiet, right? <laughs> and it's so quiet- It's not a witness re- uh, <laughs> relocation <laughs> protection scheme. <laughs> but because- because there's only about eight people living in this village, it's not worth- like the, 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 like corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in the it's village. A, it's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you're meant to call up and go, all right, Harry, uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop and my dad found that out. <laughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box and have a look mm. at what's, what's left lying around. <laughs> yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village. <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, do you know what I mean? It seems in Manchester you can probably get away with this. There's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's, he's stopped doing it now. Hasn't he? Has he? he stopped doing it. Yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. 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 Good. All right. So with the Pope's dead. Any other big news? Um, there was that uh, that thing I told you about last week. The Foot long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> talking about buying presents and stuff, I think I did treat my mum to. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, I used to get my dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So uh, got me mum. Uh, there was a cheap shop, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> so I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right? I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So, I thought, right. <laughs> she must be pleased with you, then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it, is it like a brandy liqueur? Do you liqueur? remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum, yeah. It's like a little fictional sort of character, right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I saw it. I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So, I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks, right? Oh. Got that sorted. Went to Snips. Bought the uh, Victoria Plum. Next day, I'm in I'm in town with her, right? So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come come in here a minute, right? Uh, so we go in and we're looking around, and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there. That's all right, isn't it? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. Oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just I I oh God. So then Christmas Day comes. And I said, oh. don't bother opening it. She said, no, no, why? I said, oh don't no! Why did you still give it to her? So well, it's too late. I'd already bought it. Oh, cool. So she opened it and I was like, <sighs> and she said, oh, that's nice. I said, why are you saying that? I said, the other day, so it's bloody awful. She said, oh no, I thought you were pointing at something else. Oh, oh no. So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Play record. Oh, God. Oh. That's good, isn't it? What bad? Gold Rush. Let you down. I'm, I'm actually quite affected by Carl's Victoria Plum scenario. Just the fact that, like that, that eagerness, he, he wants to make sure it's a great present. He's saved up his paper round. He thinks it's like a gnome, but modern. I'm worried that you're using it as an excuse now, and that's why you're not buying anyone any gifts, because you've had your fingers burned once. I mean, you were six, seven years old. To be fair, no, you weren't. You were about 13, weren't you, if you're doing your paper round? Yeah, I, I oh, must right. have been, been, yeah, 11 or 12 then. Oh, right. Yeah, so I'd, I'd saved up. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not using it as a thing, it's just that- What do you get your mum this year? Um, I've sent them some money so they can, uh, get a passport. <laughs> what do you mean? Are, are they trapped no, somewhere? <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're in a holding bay yeah. somewhere in Dover. Yeah, well, they've got what a do you mean? A truck driver is going <laughs> to sneak them across. <laughs> for, for new what year. do you mean? So they can buy a passport. What do they do? Sell it when they're no, a bit, <laughs> a bit down in their luck. <laughs> 
No, they, they haven't got that much money, right? They've never been abroad, and the mate said they might, er, uh, tack them next year, and they said, oh, we haven't got a passport, so I thought- You haven't got to buy a passport, have you? Cause Isn't you that your God-given right as an Englishman? No, you've got to pay for them, they're thirty quid each, so you better add do, otherwise they're conning me. Right. <laughs> so you sent them sixty quid. You don't get born with a passport, well, of course you don't. You sent them quid in an envelope, have you? Well, check. Right. Yeah. I love that. And, uh, I, 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 uh, if you're watching Teddy and uh, France to come on and they go, oh, what do you think of that? She goes, it looks bloody awful. <laughs> yeah, oh, don't oh, open no. it. Don't open it. <laughs> don't open it. So oh. you've not you've not paid for a holiday for them. You you you. No, you've just sorted out the well. It's it's the better prize, isn't it? Because they can't go anywhere <laughs> without it. Well, the passport <laughs> keeps on giving. Yeah, it's so like ten years. Ten years. That yeah. that is yeah. So, but no, I never used to. I mean, I can't <laughs> think of other things. I used to get me dad once. Once I started getting him stuff, it used sort of used to be a uh, dressing gown, yeah. and then. But as an extra surprise, he used to put like a cigar in the pocket, so he'd think that was it. Yeah. Then he'd put it on and put his hand in the pocket. Right. Go, and then oh, he'd just this? hit you because he thought you'd nicked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, dear. So you bought uh, him a jacket with a cigar? That's quite thoughtful. Yeah. Did you sneak a cigar once on yeah, Christmas? Yeah. Well, it was when that's when they used to have like the big do's, like I say. You know, they were they were known for it. Like the f the whole estate used to know that. You know, we were having a party. Yeah. So, to them. Uh, so they'd all come round. So they'd all come round and scab you know, food and drink yeah. and that. God, and pocket the, yeah, I can't ornaments. imagine, I cannot imagine how unpleasant that must have been. Awful. Awful. And you yeah. locked in your bedroom with a broken train set. Yeah. And, and looking at Victoria Plum, <laughs> yeah. whatever that was. In the bin. Oh, uh, in the bin, yeah. <laughs> and hear a mum saying, and he got me this. He got it, me this isn't this piece shit? of rubbish. He could hear him just throwing it against the yeah. wall and, and laughing. All, and all the neighbours laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you'd come down and just be in pieces with loads of spit on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. loads just of garb on it. Eyes. And all the Polaroids of them just like laughing at yeah, it and pointing. stamping on it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone just sent this in. Yeah. They've been looking on eBay yeah. for Victoria Plum. You're joking. Come here and see the photograph. Oh God, that's fantastic. Oh, well. yeah. Yeah. Look. That's it. Oh God, he got <laughs> that for his mum. It's the worst piece of tat I've oh, ever seen. Oh Carl! Yeah, oh Carl, imagine how oh gutted. Oh, imagine how. Look, think of him now, right? The, there it is. Oh. <laughs> I've ever seen. I tell you, it looks like a diddy man gone wrong. It's it looks like a diddy man prostitute. <laughs> that is. That's a, is that the one color? Well, that, well, it was a different color. It had a yellow at mine. <laughs> no, but look, how do they get? Tell them they okay, go, so, to, um, go into eBay. So you need to uh, to log on to eBay.co.uk. I'm sure you've used it before. It's the uh, online marketplace eBay.co.uk. And if you type in Victoria Plum, I'm assuming that you can <laughs> yeah, drop his. Yeah. That's amazing. It's the worst piece of rubbish. Oh, just I've ever think seen. how cute he was as a kid, though, doing that. Just think of him, just going, <laughs> just, that was, just, just seeing that it. and thinking, oh, I like <laughs> she likes gnomes. <laughs> it's the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what her prize collection of gnomes looks like, but I can't imagine. Much better than that. I mean, gnomes are a fairly oh. grotesque thing, oh. but certainly your mum's taste and discretion is, is. Did you have any? Did you have a, those houses on your estate? You'd go in there, and it was just loads of those dolls still in their packaging all around the room, and sort of like one of those homes that all, keeps the uh, sort of packaging on the three-piece suite. Why don't you buy another one for her for Christmas? Yeah, <laughs> it's three ninety-nine. It looks, but that's, that's two pounds <laughs> forty-nine because that was three ninety-nine dollars. <laughs> Oh, buy it, Carl. No, cause I've got her, I've sorted out her passport this year anyway. I'll get her that next year. Right, <laughs> so listen, right. right? Okay. Going to my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase for They basically, it's a, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh, Jesus I'll Christ. skip past that because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad's, mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just popped out <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> <laughs> just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose mum was a witch. <laughs> whose mum was a witch! Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't, she knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. You <laughs> will be dead when this happens, don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. 
you know, everyone's got to fill that little <coughs> worry, worry hole with worries, and that's us. Worry hole. Everyone's got to we've fill d- the worry hole got with worries. We've got to assume worry. that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. I, I, with worries. I love the fact that, you know, uh, doctors in a million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Suzanne and I decided to sleep tops and tails, because it made we get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm-hmm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dowl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think a- anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is. But he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain, you know? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He saw the mattress enough. So we decide to sleep tops and tails. It just gets strange. so strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So he's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. That's Unbelievable. Oh, man alive. It's like- Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our, uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of- you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So. We bought a bed, right? But there's that rip-off thing with beds where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go there. You go. Oh, that seems cheap. Well, there's no engine in it. So we bought this. We bought this like you know uh, flat and what have you, and we bought the bed, and then uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. No, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, because he had one in his van that he used to use now and again. If he was like travelling round, he'd just keep in the in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke yeah. who drove round in a van with a mattress in the back. So Uncle Alf. Away. So Uncle Alf, right? It, well, tell me about Uncle Alf. Well, you know about him. He's the one who slept in a dinghy. Because <laughs> his mattress was in his car. <laughs> 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 yeah. Why didn't he go? Oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> <laughs> Blow up the dinghy. I'm not going to go out and get the, not this time of night. So anyway, <laughs> my me, me dad got me got me his mattress, and uh, and it just stunk a diesel. <laughs> and Suzanne was like, "Oh, I'm not happy with this." And I think she realised sort of what sort of family she got herself stuff into. Stuff. Wow, she landed on her feet when she got you. So now she? she's always a bit touchy about you know mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking <laughs> ship. <laughs> <laughs> the fire engines were too late. <laughs> No one got out of the way because they were laughing so much. <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. The old man down the road. Yeah. The old woman next door whose mum's a witch. <laughs> Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> this is like and not a real place. <laughs> it's like fucking it's a, it's a children's it's TV program. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden <laughs> ticket. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with them and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> For a little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not the bees. playing with them, is he? Well, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but uh, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. Do you know what I mean? They don't get on. And it's the same with them. Don't have bees. 
I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the, the only thing he does is the honey, and it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Me mam called me to ask me to like. Fuck me, you're right. That like, look, that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you, uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean. Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it, think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> to it adds up oh, on it over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel. Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? <laughs> I got no answer. <laughs> I, I love it when Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare it. her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today, and the face feels dry and spotty. Oh God, what's wrong with it starts you? off it starts <laughs> off moaning. The first thing he does is start moaning. He wakes up and goes, Oh fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh God. I'm knackered today and my face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the f <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> but what's I'm the Madeira burst. cake? The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? Oh. Well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's oh. one of my little pleasures. <laughs> oh, God, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine from a man. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just that oh, we were. were. No, I, we I were. You studied them. them. Yeah, because yeah, I was looking for UFO data. I yeah. don't know where they put it. I don't think you find evidence of other worlds down men's pants. Yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. He, rather than he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag, but no. no but it, it you reminds want to be me. Right. You want to be specific. Of, if I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Well, still looking for it. Because your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. Couldn't stand it, but it's, it's good money. He was a prof- he wasn't like a chancellor, though. Black what was- Black What was he- what was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a- in a weedy bin? That was, uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do, like, a charity event once a year, and he did it one year. Never asked him again. Tell the story again, I No, I'd rather not, cos- Why? We got, cos we got a few, sort of, uh, complaints about it. Why? Why do you get complaints about it? Because it's because he put a kid in a bin and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so. But we could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah, tell it like a, tell it like a, you know, don't, yeah. you shouldn't do it. No, it's, it's I, yeah, but that's how I did it last time, but people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, innit? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. My dad was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know how he was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that. And he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. And if it makes you laugh, you can't help laughing, can you? Do you know Fair what I mean? Enough. So, 
what you're meant to do. <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, even But being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> So it's, it's <laughs> That's genius. Give me an example of that. Give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, give me an example of like. So uh, uh, you know, I can't, well, I can't because again, that's what I'm saying. I can't tell you the story because yeah. there might be someone out there who this person might even be listening and think I forgot about that and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I, I prefer to leave it, but I think people know. <laughs> Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing though? You see, I can't explain. He can't. Don't be silly. I prefer to to leave it, honestly. What, what, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? He was annoying me dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this mm -hmm. before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. He pulled over <laughs> and put the lad in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna burst. So we'll we'll leave that. <laughs> and then, oh God. Yeah, yeah. Right. How old was the kid? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I mean, it was a trip to sort of Blackpool. So <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> Do you think it was one of the rides? Seventeen. This is rubbish. Seventeen. Yeah. Oh, he's quite an old lad then. So, so a big lad. Yeah. <laughs> but let's let's. And uh, did he pick him up? He picks him up and put him in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the way back, he got him back again. He said, "Right, you won't do that again." On the way back, yeah, he left him there for a bit. He left him there. What? They went to Blackpool yeah. and he left the kid in the wheelie bin. Yeah. Did but, he? Yeah. What was the kid in the wheelie bin when he drove back? Yeah. Did he not get out? No, because how do you get out? It's tricky, isn't it? And <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid, was he? Let's let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid. Right, right then. So uh... is your father in prison? <laughs> Oh, I think he should be. Can we put oh. a song on? Yeah, go on then. I can't remember being a baby and I put that down to it being boring. <laughs> <laughs> Cause no, you can't remember the you good things. You can't remember your birthday. No, it's it's you remember the good things in life, don't you? I'm quite happy. I can sit down for a good hour or so, and just think back and go, oh, that was good. When was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been round, haven't they? So been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just chatting about, um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. <laughs> no, because I, you see, here's, here's the thing, you're saying how that woman changed mm. when she had her head caved in. <laughs> I, he never said that. What did you, well, the, the brain accident. Yeah, um, brain accident, yeah. The, the, the Tic Tacs, mm. now I used to love them. Yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got, this year? No, Just no, recently. years ago, oh, years like ago, years ago when I loved them. I said, I love Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. He met s one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No, no. No, that's no, what he No, he knew did. some yeah. mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And, uh, thief. he must have got about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, mm. with like about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. Mm. Now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? How, in how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then, uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you were sick lovely of lovely fresh breath. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just. Well, just, uh, so just this, sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. No. They were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> yeah, sat around yeah. for an hour uh, talking uh, about the, the I've great already tic -tac out of responses. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no, that. Opinion it, about I mean, that. I was nearly going to say, what do you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes? Yeah. And then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and not I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this hand looked like, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I like Tic Tacs, mate. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him out. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the content place. Oh, do you want some more? No, because we fucking don't. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Because we will for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up on an audio book. But that's, I think that's how we got onto it. Because even though I tr I tried to get rid of a load. I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, no you we didn't. Did. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. 
Jesus Christ! Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? Well, That's it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity is the same condensity. Um, condensity. Yeah, so I got rid of them like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even though I'd got <laughs> shut of them all, um, you'd be vacking up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> it's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's, it's tinging its way up the tube. Ting <laughs> tong ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. <laughs> that sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like Pac-Man mm. or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be vacuuming, up, tinging it. Sheila's up. getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. Up. No, it's the, a really the, little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell of That's a incre- hell of a time you had with your parents there. Oh. The old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when I, when I see you've uh, regravelled the drive. <laughs> yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck suck the drive if you want. <laughs> 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 no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> the What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac Let, incident! Let's never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking there. It's Christmas Day. I go, what are you smiling at? Oh, I remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about sending this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why, out of interest though, and this is, this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it, is it, is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we, uh, sort of born? Because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why, why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, developed? I, I, I honestly, it's got to be trauma, on it? It's the things. Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, where were you born? 72. What, you can only remember, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Um, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, you no, know? no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> That's amazing. Because oh they, 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 they oh, pinpoint they things. They all the tic tacs they never yeah, yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No! <laughs> because you're not doing anything, <laughs> are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then! And, and it's oh, weird. I and remember, <laughs> must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st- strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, don't remember no, that. No, 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 you, no, you, no, you weren't there. there. Were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember well, having you one know, of I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to go in a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, okay, um, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by, um <laughs> Gangsters. <laughs> Where's the fucking Tic Tacs? <laughs> Carl, any more? I'll tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about, well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do, y- do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. Forrest, the Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. people to, to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forrest Gump people? <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> <laughs> for them to well, be referred yeah, to A mini bus with <laughs> exactly. uh, Life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. Com. Well, oh, Forrest Gump types. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people. It these was, pe- a, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, the people with learning difficulties. Difficult yeah, yeah, and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so, he got five of them in the, uh, in the cab. Yeah. And they had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff, but there was one 
who was just causing loads of trouble and they couldn't control him. Oh and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's, it's not good for them. It stresses them out and, and you could end up with a bit Thanks, of, Dr. Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now. And he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool and, um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Oh, he did what? Oh, He God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. It was having a good time. It thought it was one of the rides. Can you stop saying it? Him. <laughs> yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time was... and, and he, once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked <laughs> him up and he, he was fine, he had a good what, time. What, he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there, not, not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> In a wheelie bin? In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because, like, his arms were trapped on the thing. Some <laughs> of those want- What, he tied him up? In. No, do you know, like, when- because he was a big fella, and, like, he, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that, so he was, he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What, you feel so <laughs> right? <laughs> well, but anyway, that's- I didn't really want to talk about it, you just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you- did, do his, you know, family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because- <laughs> because <laughs> he had another- he had another problem similar to it where he had a- a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away. And, um, he took him there, there was no problem, about- about ten old women in a- in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble. <laughs> 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 so he pulled over it. <laughs> no, right, so he took him there, uh, everything's fine, he dropped him off, they had a lovely the night. Yeah. Right, they had a lovely night, won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, I wanna be dropped off here, take me there, I wanna be dropped off first, I've gotta get up early, blah blah, you know, my husband's expecting me, I'm already late, take me here first, take me there. And he just pulled up, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, to get out. <laughs> and uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis. They charged that company who was meant to be taking them home in the minibus, and he got the sack. Jeez. But a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I want to be dropped off first, take me here first, don't you? Yeah, so he acts like a madman. <laughs> 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 Good. Oh, that was All right, great. We've got, uh, we've got to crack on, haven't we, really? We've got Says uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Goodbye. Yeah, Goodbye. See you next time. Bye. Me, me mum and dad, right, they moved to this little, like, little house, right, and, um, they had loads of furniture that they've collected over the years without chucking out and they've moved to this small house so they just had s too much furniture, right? Mm. And uh, they had this double bed and that was for like, you know, when friends come round and that, they can stay there. But the problem was he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed. Sort of wrapped around because, the bed, yeah. yeah, but because the, s the room was so small, he thought, I can sort that out. Yeah. Right? And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed? He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed, and everything. And well, he just sliced some off, like a big sandwich. Just c cut just, a bit off. Just cut, cut the crust how, off. How much is that? Would you say? About eight inches. Six about inches. eight inches. But hold on, but that well, won't cut work because it'll all fall out the side. And then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? He it'll just it collapse. It didn't. It didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed, <laughs> but but the weird thing is, he did it. And even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah. Like, well, of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. Not even that though, just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people this is- this is hard work now. This is like, you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he- why did he build the wardrobes first without <laughs> measuring- putting the- I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> but it's just weird how only eight did inches- Did he use an electric- one of those electric saws? Yeah. And That's there was amazing. just- presumably there was just kind of- what sort of material it? and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh, with the legs? Did he have to move the legs in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the- the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was like, sure. yeah, that's alright, you've done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night, he's like, you know, sleep well. Got up in the morning after having about 45 minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. 
Yeah. You really you are your father's son, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. That's right, with not that. right. And he said, "Oh well." I said, "What have you done? It doesn't seem the same." And he said, "Oh, I had to shorten it, sort of thing. You mm. know, to fit in the gap." I said, "Well, I can't sleep in it." I said, that, "And there was a big kerfuffle." My man was saying, "Look, you have our bed then, and we'll sleep in that one." Mm. And my dad was like, "Sod that." Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. You know, <laughs> some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep, and I was saying, "Look, you know, I only come and see you like every couple of, you know, probably once can every I, six can months." I'm not being funny, but next time we go home, can I film it? Mm. Just for, I mean, Channel 4 or something. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The yeah, Pennington's. Uh, be that, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? Ho <laughs> ho oh, 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 That's brilliant. Is anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or Ex Bravo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird though. Weird. Play a record? Or do you want to play? Do you want to play, uh, do you fancy playing some of yours? Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you, man. Oh yeah, no, I tell you, yeah, I'd like to play this. Yeah, Bronze Age Fox. Uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, the Carl, the always working, he's always tune. working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's on the bobby ball. <laughs> Anne Robinson, um, put in the Welsh into room 101. What, cos? She didn't like them and that. Yeah, she just said, well, they're, you know, they're going in the, you know. Can un she said it slightly more eloquently than that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can under- the people or the place? I don't know. I think, I think it was the place and therefore the people. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? No, well, you know me mum and dad have sort of, uh, moved from Manchester, they've retired now in Wales. Oh, right? yeah. And it is, uh... <laughs> Look at his face, turning his nose up. No, but... It it is pretty depressing. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them places that uh, it's like you go back in time and that when you go there. I mean, maybe the major cities there. Maybe Cardiff is all right. What? Even coming from Manchester, it's like going back in time. It's just uh, it's like one of them places. That w it feels like every day is Sunday. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just depressing and. Grey and slate Lots of everywhere. Lots walking around going, I'm late. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's the sort of attitude they have, right? This, and this is true, because my mum and dad live there and that, right? And they love it, it's alright, it's an healthy place to go when you get older and that. But, this this is why they don't move on in Wales. Well, I'd just like to <laughs> make another no, no. sorry to any Welsh people listening, we're not saying you don't move on. Carl is. No, but- Sorry about the little Chinese shoes again The thing well. is, it's good that, in a way, that they do do that, and they don't want to be like, you know, rushing about everywhere, cos the way London is, isn't that great either, is it? Cos sure. it's totally opposite here, right? Yeah. So I'm not- I'm not having a go. It is a bit dull. I think even people who live there will agree with me, okay. right? But, like, one of the shops that my mum and dad use, right, it's only a little sort of villagey type shop, uh, they can't be bothered staying open for hours and hours, right? Because there's not enough people to use the shop. Yeah. So what you do is, uh, they get used to what you buy- And they leave it out. They put it in a phone box outside. They put it in a phone box? Yeah. So it doesn't get wet. So my dad's loving that. Well, Once yeah. he found that out, it was like, brilliant. But that- how is that a bad thing? That's brilliant. Well, it's not. For other people, it is for my dad. Cos he's picking up all sorts of stuff. Oh, chickens. no, he's not! Oh, yeah. He's not nicking other people's shopping. Well, it's not like nicking, is it? Cos it's not theirs yet. <laughs> oh! And you've stitched him up on radio. Well, of course, because yeah. they're going to think, who's that? Wh who is there in town with a mank accent? Who, who, keeps, ma who yeah. keeps making phone calls? <laughs> and is getting fatter? Yeah. That's the. You've stitched him I right love that. Me, I love that that your dad was excited when he found out. Oh. I can't believe, I can't believe that he's moved there, he's retired to this little village he where was... it's based on trust and community and he is abusing it, he's using his scally mank ways. Bloody hell, like us, there's no bread again. <laughs> there's old women was going empty? hungry, yeah. the cats aren't getting fed, and your whore father is just, I can't, oh, that's obscene. That's obscene. Oh, I think it's a die thief. That oh. fella from <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> I don't even think they've got Sky there yet, have they? They can't listen, they won't- they won't know what's- I think you stitched him right up. I hope you have, actually. I hope he goes down for it. I hope he's hounded out of the community like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. They should get burning torches, go up to the set mansion- fire to his, Set fire to his cottage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Right, well, He's uh, out of the choir. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the, you know, our, our lip We hair. are broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't as sort of like... Yeah, but you, you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do. What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and, uh, webbed hands and that. They went to school. <laughs> and, uh, I got, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm going to, I'm going to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So I said, oh, have, have we got any school, sort of school photographs with the, uh, big headed kids in? <laughs> And he said, no, no, nobody bought, bought those sort of school photos, cause, cause they were in it, so he was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well... <laughs> no! No, he said, he said sales would, you know, cause he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that, and he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so... I would uh, love them! Yeah! That's why I'd buy them! Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If it's on the mantelpiece. Well, yeah, yeah. well, uh, well. Hmm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know... When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a, was there a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but... No, well, there, was there, was weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who, uh, used to, like, live in one of the council flats, right? And, uh, she had a three-wheeled, sort of big, what do you call it? <laughs> three-wheeled son. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. Well, he got, uh, like, a big Tricycle. tricycle, but for, a la for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike, though, it was a... No, 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 it was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to, uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back, <laughs> with his like legs dangling over, and they'd be going to like the like the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time, or the same one? <laughs> yeah, same, <laughs> same yeah. little sort of bald headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. Oh. Bring out your ill, <laughs> and then just people just throw Granddad just in the back and go yeah. like we get four quid for Granddad. But, but, but she's He's got a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're very low, but they're extremely Bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> She used to, uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but she'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective, uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating a police <laughs> officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, now, I've heard, <laughs> still be here, right? yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you picking on your husband a lot, yeah. we'll be keeping an eye on you, do it again, and, uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that, she That's was alright. And how was the husband? Did, 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 was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the basket? No, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's yeah. good. Just you to can't, do you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Uh, I think impersonating a police officer Well you probably did, there, were, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop, but I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was uh, you know, but well, let's, let's face it. It's, you know, he's he's not going to be caught because why well, would we anyone know? But it's not like his son's going to say it on a on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, yeah. Is this something you did generally? Kind of a little bit of like vigilante work? <laughs> just whatever. And his mate just you know, if they saw something going on, they go, "What can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do or whatever?" <laughs> That's fantastic. But, that uh, is brilliant. Right. Okay. Um, coming up, knob news. Smashing Pumpkins, Terror of Rock, that of course, Rick, is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want to. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock, so yeah. I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. Well, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Naked with a yeah. couple of... And a rosy big arse. And a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just had an email here, um, Monkey News. Yeah. From a listener. 
Yeah. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a chimp, a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said, it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are, so... Well, um, we think of that, Carl. That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Mm -hmm. Amusing, articulate, accurate. She remembered exactly who was there and everything, yeah. sitting in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, that at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, ludicrous. just listen. I listen I got, to what we say. I got one, uh, about a shaved cat. Well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be I'm reading, happy. That'll keep me going for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'll be reading that later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Mm, I know. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, castle little monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought, I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure that's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go. Uh, my dad says, where is it? I'll look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me, look. It's gonna be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then, uh, start looking at the leaflet, right, and, uh, noticed. Didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not Monkey World. It wasn't a Monkey World. Well, how, it, what, no. what was it called then? Something like... M m monkey Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was just, it, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what they they had what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things that uh, Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Loads of them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're, woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not your, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like the mission in Armageddon. As you said, a boat. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're on the way back. <laughs> so how far have uh, you got before you bothered to read the leaflet? Uh, uh, probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. No, we went to a, uh, sort of a, an amusement place. Brilliant. Arcade. I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in so it has to roll down and they go flat and then an arm pushes them. It was them, one of them. Really? But I, I spent out years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right? My mum and dad had been, been there before and yeah. they said, you'll love it. It's brilliant. It's got like uh, a war bit in it. A war bit, right? Yeah, like, because they, they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. So you'll be loving that. So, sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right. He's gone from one of his childhood passions to where they're all right. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, my mum and dad had been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was like a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> My dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, trying to scoop off the cash. <laughs> oh, I cool. like the fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want a ride one? No, but they, they we're were- not, We're not a ride. They were massive and he's just like, look at that, look at the state of that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, right. No, but he doesn't, he doesn't, he, because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? <laughs> and he, he was really like, oh God. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they'd look like. 
Uh, <laughs> but my mum, my mum had got bored. She went off to buy a little, uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her luck. It was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was gonna be really expensive. Sure, so she's she bought one lady. of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, come on, we go in. It's rubbish, this. <laughs> but know. the fat family wouldn't let him play with him. So, uh, he just said on the way home, he said, I can safely say that I never want to go there again before I die. <laughs> so, that was that. And then we went home. Why would he ever give you that information? In case it was like a, a secret birthday present. Yeah. Go, oh God, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat <laughs> couple. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. By his bedside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am. After yeah. spending like a week with them. Well, they, says, they told, they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid, or? No, just, just like, you know, the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, I no, they were saying things like, Suzanne, so, uh, why is the moon out at night in the seventh <laughs> yeah. of the day? Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces again? <laughs> <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, don't waste money on a coffin for him, just put him in a bin bag. <laughs> 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 Your father said that. About himself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that, because that is great. That gives me an idea. So is it, man. <laughs> Carl, I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of uh, you go t t to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people. That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when like a child sees a midget or something. In the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing, um, Ash, just the, our producers, uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing he's him through the VC. He's not a midget, we should make that. No, he's not a little midget, he's not tall. But, um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> Do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at you. <laughs> do you go up to people? Do you go up to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. Well, tell what this story. Well, um... Your father was a taxi driver? My dad used to, well, He had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then. They don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't, they don't <laughs> have a variety of jobs? Stuff. Sure. But, um, it, one, at one point, he had a black cab and I, I used to, uh, used to go with him. He used to get, a, like, a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. And sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> Anyway, we got this call and, uh, like the guy on the end of the radio said, oh, you've, you've got, uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you? So he said, yeah. So it's just like, you know, we've got a pick up at, uh, number 11 Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, alright. And it was this woman, it was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow. The Elephant Woman? Yeah, it looked like... <laughs> It, 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 it was really oh. strange because I was in the front of the cab and, um, when you're a kid, you, if you, if something looks odd, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, be all right. And we're, we're driving towards just, her. Look, it don't worry, and I've got loads of buns. And just to- I think I'll just throw one down the street if it's- if you run after You're it. being mean, right? How, old, you, bit, was yeah. how old were you, 18? No, I was, I was about 12 or sure. something like that. 11, 12. Hmm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like she, she, she was holding, like, a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> right. <laughs> And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And, uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back- Cause you turn into stone. Well, <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the dri driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of I'm having, having a look trying to work out, and I really, I mean he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that, it was that weird. <laughs> oh God. So I'm not sure you're from. Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog or, boys walking yeah, around the Lord with the Rings. They've the, got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah, and you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this sort? Is not what Manchester. is this? This is not place. the place you grew up. This yeah, is oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and go look symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, wasn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before? Years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now, back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the fact it. that stress can cause your 
<laughs> fingers to fuse and your head yeah. to grow. No, but if if she like, must have been really stressed to have a head like yeah, that. yeah. She what, was really, yeah, was she an accountant or something? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what? But what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going, by the she, way? She couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. I, I think <laughs> she, was, she was going to like to a the fair. <laughs> Seriously, Alice <laughs> of on my mum's life, she was. Because at ah. the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals, they don't judge you, do they? <laughs> She's not she an was animal. animal. She's a human She's being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she You know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> do you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> that's- look, so listen, so this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? <laughs> Come on, yeah, to find her husband. Is it- <laughs> Is this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm, not, I'm not taking the mickey because it must be so, really bad. Of for course you. it is. Come on, come on, come on. I need to ask. Ask. I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. What's going on about that? To think that she. I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think. But what you're saying, you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The I think you're right. Like, you just, there's, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr father where to drive it? Did she have it written on a note? Did she point with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right, this has got silly. Pick your song. But uh, and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village. A little small village. Right. Um, just and hidden <laughs> out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. <laughs> and, uh, photos. and now... <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please enter at your peril. Should it give me a shiny shilling? Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm gonna play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late, which we've been just, uh, you know, rapping with uh, Carl P here, and this is I Need Direction. I mean, my dad, right? He can, like, put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? He's, he's done that, first of all. Right, so, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs. Yeah, he can do all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working, what should I do? Mm. And he'll say, like... Is that not brain surgeon? And he'll yeah. say, oh, fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters, Inc.? What yeah. do you make of it? Um, it's so, alright, it's, it, it is a kid's film, it, it sort of annoys Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having, like... <laughs> <laughs> what gave that away? <laughs> Could I just say also that I do not advocate the use of vices on friends' heads. It's dangerous. Do not, do not, um, squeeze your, your mate's head in a vice. That's just between me and Carl and, you know, and he he's an experienced annoyer. And he probably wouldn't let me do it, to be honest. I have to offer him an awful lot of money. Also, do not smoke. There's no point. And floss. I wish I'd flossed when I was a kid. Also, if you've got a bicycle or anything like that for Christmas, please wear the correct whoa, safety whoa. gear. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Well, I got a bike as a kid. Yeah. Right? And my dad, uh, you know, it, I think I think the helmets used to come come with them and what have you. I popped it on, went out on my bike, coming back into the garden. Dad sees me. He said, come here. I said, what? He said, I never want to see you wearing that helmet again. You look ridiculous. <laughs> Carl, have we still got monkey news? We've got monkey news coming up. Now, you must be disappointed because you didn't make it to the monkey sanctuary, but you still managed to scrape together monkey news on your holiday. Yeah. That's so impressive. So I found some of that. We've got- how, how, do you, how do you get so many breaks and holidays? Because you went- you went away with Suzanne's <coughs> parents. You've just been away with your parents. That's a couple of weeks, ten days. So that's probably about three weeks in all. You had that- you went to Manchester, you were- you had that day off because your trousers were wet. I mean, and you've- you know, I'm mean, supposed because you, you've only got one job and, you know, I've got a lot more, this is just one of my jobs. But I mean, don't you ever count your blessings, go, God, thank God I just- I can have time off, I, I don't mm -hmm. work too hard, you know, I'm not stressed too no, much. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, it's just all to do with when you do work, do a lot, so I've- I get a lot done. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm always doing stuff. I mean, even though when I was in Cornwall, right, I'm sat there on the grass. Mm. Uh, oh, I'd love to just sit on the grass. Uh, yeah, just you're just you're out, I know. Yeah, well, you know. M me dad and Susanna playing crib, right? I sort of fallen out with him at <laughs> Your dad and Susanna playing crib. Why did you fall? Because you do live in the 1940s. Yeah. Why did you fallen out? 
Because with crib, have you ever played crib? Yeah. Right, you've got to be pretty good at maths. Sure. Well, you've got to make your cards add up to fifteen and all. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna- I was just gonna correct you on you've got to be good at maths. Yeah. What- what? Algebra, quantum physics, what? No, just- just adding up- Adding up to fifteen. Brilliant. I mean, you can almost do it on your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> You could in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad's uh, really good at maths, and like he said, how many have you got? And, and he always counts, isn't it? It's like fifteen, two, fifteen, four, fifteen, six, three, three for your hat, one, and all that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And he adds it up really one quick. One for his knob. Right. So I was like, right, hang on a minute. And he goes, no, what do you mean, hang on? I don't know, what, what have you got? I said, oh, forget it. I said, this isn't, this isn't fun if you're gonna start getting all arsy with me. Sure. So, forget it! Yeah. I love it! But he's only, I'm sure he's, I don't know him, but I'm sure he's just winding you up. It, like, his, his victory is you going, ah, oh, forget it, I'm not playing. Throughout my life so far, I've always just, I've never planned for anything, mm. right? It's just always happened. Yeah, yeah. The time, you know what I mean, being in plays at school, never planned it, but when I did it, I went down a storm. It was fun. Yeah, we all remember that. So, we, I, as I remember, you did Little Donkey. Did Little Donkey, yeah. And um, then later, someone was filming at the back. Was it your dad's mate? My dad's mate. Well, yeah, yeah, and on the camcorder, he listened to it back, watched him playing it. His dad says, just off camera, what does he say? I don't want to say it because I'm in charge of the show and I'd be irresponsible. He looks like a right twat. <laughs> so, and so I, he gets I, I, home, I, I, listen, watching that, and then here's his dad just off camera go, he looks like a right twat. <laughs> yeah, alright, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you worried about? Your no, dad's saying sorry, that the Can way... I just interject? Because I'm really worried about this idea of Carl being on MTV. Because the problem is that, you know, let's be honest, Rick, I mean, we're we're getting by the skin of our teeth, aren't we, really? It's yeah. only Carl that's keeping this afloat. Yeah. And if he gets on MTV and the world sort of gets a sense of him and they understand him, and, and he he won't be ours anymore. We won't be able to control him. It'll be out there. It'll be in the Well, that's, that's no, no, the no, thing. No, 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 that's the thing. It, it, that's the terrible thing, though, isn't it? It's like, Carl is my pet. But mm. I realise I've got to release him into he's the wild, wild. and you know because I love him, I know he's got to go free. <laughs> sure, but I yeah. wanna. I it's wanna... like Kez. <laughs> Maybe it's someone like... beat him to death, <laughs> and we won't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have you on though, I'll have you on as a guest. Uh, yeah. which, gets, which gets me on to something we've got coming up today. Oh right. yeah, he's got a new idea. Yeah. Right. Um, do you know, like, I've talked about ghosts and we had that good discussion the other week walking to the yeah. Hillary Circus station, yeah, yeah, and I was telling you about ghosts and you were saying, Carl, don't be an idiot and all that. I uh, spoke to a woman in the week, done mm -hmm. a little interview <laughs> You've with done her. an little interview? Done Brilliant. a little interview, two minutes or so, with, okay. uh, with a woman who's, who's got ghosts in her house. So, uh, I look forward to uh, hearing that later. That sounds brilliant. Up later. Well, I'm going to play a classic tune now. I've, I've just gone straight for it. I've gone for the jugular. This is Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie. Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton. Carl was also nervous. You had a bit of shock last week, didn't you? Just a little bit. His, uh, his dad tuned in to the show. Yeah. Um, and Carl's never told him that he actually speaks on the show. He just says, I just pressed the buttons, right? He's kept him from it. He used to do radio before and you never told him, did you? Mm. It's because of the little donkey incident. Yeah. When he went along to it. Was that the, the twat incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's never told him since, but, but they've promised not to listen, haven't they? Well, me dad's, uh, uh, me mum said to me, don't worry, don't be put off this week, because, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, no. I've, I've told him he can't listen, but I hear my dad in the background kind of going, oh, Lurks. <laughs> so, he might be listening. <laughs> so that's extra pressure. Yeah. Plus a camera crew in. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You well, don't, you don't like, like it, do you? you know, this is good training for MTV, because then he can watch you on TV. I mean, what's he gonna make of that? Oh. Yeah. Does he know you're bald? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't keep your hat on when you're with him and say, oh, no, I just press the buttons. No, it's oh. just, it's just, you know, it's like when, when I was in any plays, I didn't tell him. No. Um, any sort of parents evening, I never gave them the note. Uh -huh. <laughs> really? Yeah. So then what did the teachers think? You were just an orphan? No, just on an off chance, um, my mate's dad spoke to me dad once, I think, and sort of said, oh, you got to school to see how, you know, your kid's doing. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> so there's a parents evening, so he went- <laughs> said what kid? He went to one, and that's when Mrs. Matthew said I'd never be a high flyer. <laughs> <laughs> Was she? Yeah. <laughs> I think we should call Mrs. Matthews and make her eat her words. Well, <laughs> ah, she will turn on to MTV when uh, I don't know that, like their their slamming session. Yeah, yeah. and they're, they're going, go, that's young Pilkington. <laughs> He's bald, but it's definitely him. <laughs> I recognise that Willie Hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah.